Good evening. Welcome to another edition of the 411 Talk Zone radio show, Red Pill Edition. My name is Leon Jones. And during this segment, I'm going to use this question as my title. Was it depression that took this guy over the edge? Was it depression that took this guy over the edge? Now, what I am referring to is a video going around and it happened in my home state of Maryland. And I'm talking about the brother who was involved in a triple homicide. And it all began with the women who were the mothers of his children not allowing him to see his children. Now, let me tell you something, and I'm gonna be very, very frank as a man, and this is gonna sound cold because and shout out to Angry Man for saying this too, because I 100% agree with them wholeheartedly. Because as a man, you have to make decisions that are unpopular. Now, me, if any ex of mine, and I'm just talking about me, told me, I couldn't see my kids. You know what I would say? Forget it. I'm not going to get involved with it. I'll pay the child support and I'll explain the situation later. Why? Well, number one, I already know how the system is. And number two, as a man, when it comes to being a father to your children, and I'm going to give another shout out to Angry Man again for saying this. When a man's a deadbeat, nothing is said. Because the mothers already know he's a deadbeat. But when a man loves his children, and Tommy said this a long time ago, the mother does not want the father involved in the children's lives except for the money. And there have been many cases where mothers have killed their children because the father wanted to be involved with their children. Now, I'm gonna say this, and I'm gonna get psychological for a moment. Now, was this brother in a state of depression or was he psychotic? Was he in a state of depression or was he psychotic? Now, Going back, when it comes to this man, well, his children were in a car when he went to shoot his wife. So he must have seen him already. So when your children are in a car and you go and shoot their mother, I have to ask this question. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to interpret it this way. He shot one of the mothers in front of the children. But again, he had his children in the car. Now, I am not a psychologist, but I don't condone this type of behavior, not for me. I just said, fuck them kids and I would have been out of there because I can make more kids. And as a man, you got to think like that. Let me be a deadbeat. And when it comes to children, I know we're supposed to love our children. But this guy was very, very calm when he got on video 
And he said, I shot my ex-girlfriend in the head. Now I'm going to take the life of my ex-wife. And then I'm basically going to take myself out so I won't go to prison. Very calm. Now, the question that I have to ask is, was he depressed? Did he have other issues going on? Nobody is ever going to know that. And I have to bring this to the forefront because when it comes to male issues, nobody gives a damn about men's issues. Now, looking at the tape or the video a few times, I'm just going to say this. Number one, as a man, be careful who you sleep with. Be careful who you marry. You're not getting the cream of the crop out here. And as a man, are you the cream of the crop? Do you have baggage? I know the system rapes men over the coals. It does. I've been there myself. I, I know how it feels to have your bank account shut down. I know how it is when you're not working and you're collecting an unemployment check and the system takes the majority of your money so you can't live. I can remember making $7.50 an hour. And do you know how much I got every week after? Because at that time, not only did I have an order for child support, I had an order to pay health insurance. So after taxes, after child support and health insurance, Garnished from my paycheck, I was left with $25 a week. I had to file for bankruptcy. I also had to move out of my apartment. I couldn't afford it. Now, did I go into a state of depression? No, but I was stressed. I had gone from job to job. Because at that time, and we're talking about in the late 90s, $7.50 an hour wasn't that much. In fact, minimum wage had just been increased to $4.25 an hour. Now, all my kids are grown now, so I don't have to worry about that. But the system is not for men at all. And I don't care what race of man you are. And as a man, I believe during this video, I don't know if it was his ex-wife or the girlfriend, but I believe one of them had found another man and was pregnant with another baby, another man's baby. If I am interpreting the situation correctly. If I'm not, somebody let me know because I want to give accurate information. But this is not the first time something like this has happened. I remember living in Pennsylvania and had a case like this in Delaware where I believe the lawyer got shot, the ex-wife got shot, and the judge got shot. Now, the person didn't kill themselves, but there have been fathers who have offed themselves out of living because they couldn't deal with it anymore. And what men are doing now is something that not many men did in the past. See, back in the day, people like me, we would take abuse from the system because 
we didn't know how to deal with the system. It didn't mean it. We didn't feel like getting in our car, doing something that was not to our normal behavior to somebody in that system. Because I can tell you, when I had to pay support, the individual counselors in that system thought they were 10 guys. But I did remember when I lived in Reading, Pennsylvania, I got loud. They walked me right out of there because I was going to hurt somebody. Because as a man, I know the system isn't fair. But be that as it may, did this guy have depression issues? Now, the reason why I am mentioning depression, and I'm going to share my screen while I put this up there, up here, because I'm not a psychologist. Now, there could be some psychopathic behavior involved with this as well. But I always have to ask, what is depression? Now, I say that because what was real frightening, this guy was very calm. Again, now, going back to everything, what is depression? What is depression? Okay. Depression. Or I'm just going to call it a depressive disorder. It's basically a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel. So in other words, depression is a serious mental illness that affects how you feel. It's very negative. And it's also affecting the way you think and how you act. Now, fortunately, it is also treatable. Now, depression causes feelings of sadness and or loss of interest in activities that you once enjoyed. So when I talk about negatively or negativity, well, depression has a negative connotation when it comes to your life because it can lead to a variety of emotional and physical problems, and it can also decrease your ability to work, and it also can put you in a state of sadness when you're at home. Again, depression causes negative feelings. And I say that because there are a variety of emotional and physical program, uh, problems. And for the most part, when that is going on, it decreases your ability to function at work and at home. Now, you have to understand that there are symptoms that are mild and they're also severe. Again, number one, you're going to feel sad. You're going to have a depressed mood. There's going to be a loss of interest or pleasure in activities that you once enjoyed in your life. What about appetite? Well, here's what can happen. It could go either way. You could have no appetite, which it's going to cause a loss of weight, or you could have a big appetite, which now you're getting into a eating disorder, which now you gain weight. You could also have trouble doing this. You may not sleep, which is going to cause another disorder known as sleep apnea, or you're sleeping too much. You're also going to have a loss of energy, or you're going to have increased fatigue. You're also going to have an interest in purpleless physical activity and examples. You're not going to be able to sit still. You're always going to be pacing. 
and of course, hand wringing. And what about your speech? Well, your speech can become impaired. Your movements are going to be lethargic. Now, these actions must be severe enough to be observable by others. Now, what about feelings? You know, as a man, when we lose a job, we feel worthless. We feel guilty. Now, is it our fault that we lost our job? Well, if we are doing something that is going against the rules of the company, that is our fault. But if we get terminated because a company decides, well, we don't need you anymore, is that our fault? No, but either way, we're going to feel some type of way because as a man, we're looked at as being lazy if we don't have a job. You see what society does to men? Society makes men feel like we're worthless, where on the other side, women can do whatever they want to do. Now, when you're in a depressed state, you're also going to have trouble thinking, concentrating, making good decisions. And then here's the big one. And what I'm doing, I'm taking the issue of depression and I'm linking other mental illnesses with it because depression can cause the thoughts of death and or suicide. Now, this brother in that video said he was going to take his life so we wouldn't go to jail. But he also took two other lives as well. Now, for the most part, in order for depression to be diagnosed, symptoms must last at least two weeks and must represent a change in your previous level of functioning for a diagnosis of depression. Also, medical conditions will occur. You're going to have thyroid problems, a vitamin deficiency, a brain tumor that can cause mimic symptoms of depression. So it is very important to rule out general medical causes. Now, just want to share this with you because, of course, this is the APA, the American Psychological Association, that actually puts out this data because depression affects an estimated one in 15 adults in any given year, that's 6.7%. And one in six people, 16.6% will experience depression at some time in their lives or during their life. Now, something else you need to understand, depression can occur at any time. But on average, first appears during the late teens to mid twenties. So women are more likely than men to experience depression. Some studies show that one third of women will experience a major depressive episode in their lifetime. Now, again, there is a high degree of heritability, approximately 40% when first degree relatives, parents, siblings, or children have depression. Now, when we talk about depression, is it different? from grief or bereavement. Because the death of a loved one, loss of a job, or ending a relationship are difficult experiences for any person to endure. It's normal for feelings of sadness or grief to develop in response to such situations. So anybody who is experiencing loss often might describe themselves as being depressed. But being sad is not the same as having depression. Now, a death of a loved one, when it comes to grieving, I'm going to say this, the grieving process is natural and unique to each individual. Again, the death of a loved one is going to be followed by grieving. So the process of grieving is natural and unique to each individual, and it shares some of the same features 
of depression, but it is not depression. Now, both grief and depression may involve intense sadness and withdrawal from usual activities. There are also important ways that grief, bereavement, and depression are different. Now, in grief, painful feelings basically come in waves, often intermixed with positive memories of the deceased. In major depression, mood and or interest pleasure are decreased for the most part, two weeks. Now in grief, self-esteem is usually maintained and major depression feelings of worthiness and self-loathing are common. Now in grief, thoughts of death may surface when thinking of or fantasizing about joining the, the, the deceased loved one. So when somebody's already dead, you may encounter a thought of joining them. So how would you join them? You may have suicidal thoughts. Now, going back to this brother, I'm just going to say this. He didn't do what he did. Was this, would it have been a preconceived or planned murder? A conspiracy? I don't know. I don't know. But besides depression, I believe there were some other things that have taken place because when it comes to a man's children, a woman won't allow a man to see his children, but she allows her children to be around other men. The father of those children, believe it or not, he is going to want to take somebody out. It's a fact. Because, again, when it comes to major depression, thoughts are focused on ending one's life due to feeling worthless or undeserving of living or being unable to cope with the pain of depression. So when it comes to grief and depression, they can both coexist. Now, for some people, the death of a loved one, losing a job, or being a victim of a physical assault or major disaster can lead to depression. Now, when grief and depression occur, the grief is more severe and lasts longer than grief without depression. So, distinguishing between grief and depression is important, and it can assist people in getting help support or treatment they need. Now, when it comes to depression, there are risk factors because depression can affect anyone. Even if a person who appears to live in relatively ideal circumstances. Now, some factors can play a role in depression. Number one, we look at biochemistry. And that basically stems from differences in certain chemicals in the brain that may contribute to symptoms of depression. Then we hop back to genetics because family heredity can explain a lot because depression can run in families. For example, if one identical twin has depression, the other has a 70% chance of having the illness sometime during their life personality. People with low self-esteem who are easily overwhelmed by stress or who are generally pessimistic appear to be more likely to experience depression. Let's take a look at environmental factors because continuous exposure to violence, neglect, abuse, or property may make some people more vulnerable to depression. So the question that must be asked, how do you treat depression? Now, if this brother who was involved in that triple murder-suicide, how could it have been prevented? Did he reach out for help? Because when it comes to men, sometimes we have a lot of pride. We don't think we need help. 
And one of the reasons is society doesn't believe men, it believes women. But when it comes to treating depression, depression is among the most treatable of mental disorders. Why? Because, because 80 to 90% of people, I'm gonna say this again, when it comes to depression, it is among the most treatable of mental disorders. Again, why? Very simple. Because between 80 and 90% of people with depression eventually respond well to treatment. Almost all patients gain some relief from their symptoms. Now, before a diagnosis or a treatment should be implemented, a health professional should conduct a thorough diagnostic evaluation, including an interview and a physical examination. Now, in some cases, there may need to be a blood test taken to make sure that the depression is not due to a medical condition like a thyroid problem or a vitamin deficiency, or reversing a medical cause would alleviate the depression-like symptoms. Now, the evaluation will, for the most part, identify specific symptoms and explore medical and family histories, as well as cultural and environmental factors with the goal of arriving at a diagnosis and planning a course of action. Now, when it comes to medication, brain chemistry may contribute to an individual's depression and may factor into their treatment. Now, for this reason, antidepressants might be prescribed to help modify one, one's brain chemistry. Again, when it comes to depression, and if you look on TV, there are a number of antidepressants that are out. And often they're used to modify one's brain activity. Now, these medications are not sedatives, uppers, or tranquilizers. They are not habit forming. Generally, antidepressant medications have no stimulating effect on people not experiencing depression. However, antidepressants may involve some improvement within the first week or two of, of use. Again, antidepressants may produce some improvement within the first week or two. Now, when it comes to use, going back to antidepressants, antidepressants may produce some improvement within the first week or two of, of use, yet full benefits may not be seen for two to three months. Now, if a patient feels little or no improvement after several weeks, his or her psychiatrist can alter the dose of the medication or add or substitute another antidepressant. Now, in some situations, other psychotropic medications may be helpful. Now, it is important to let your doctor know if a medication isn't working for you or you may experience side effects. So basically, psychiatrists usually recommend that patients continue to take medication for six or more months after the symptoms have improved. Longer term maintenance treatment may be suggested to decrease the risk of future episodes for certain people who have a high risk of depression. Now, psychotherapy or talk therapy is sometimes used alone for treatment of mild depression. Now, for moderate to severe depression, psychotherapy is often used along with antidepressant medications. Now, I've already explained this in a video before, so you're gonna hear me mention CBT. CBT stands for Cognitive Behavioral Therapy. And for the most part, that's been found to be effective in treating depression. Now, if you don't know what CBT is, CBT is a form of therapy focused on problem solving in the present because CBT helps a person to recognize distorted or I, I can say negative thinking 
with the goal of changing thoughts and behaviors to respond to challenges in a more positive manner. Because when it comes to psychotherapy, it may involve only the individual, but it can involve or include others. For example, family or couples therapy can help address issues within these close relationships. Now, group therapy brings people together with similar illnesses to basically create a supportive environment. And it can assist the participant to learn how others cope in similar situations. So depending on the severity of the depression, treatment can take a few weeks or much longer. So in many cases, significant improvement can be made in 10 to 15 sessions. Now, there's also something called ECT, electroconvulsive therapy. Now, what that is, is a medical treatment that has been most commonly reserved for patients with severe major depression who have not responded to other treatments. It involves a brief electrical stimulation of the brain while the patient is under anesthesia. Now, a patient typically receives ECT two to three times a week for a total of six to 12 treatments, and it is usually managed by a team of trained medical professionals, including a psychiatrist, an anesthesiologist, a nurse, or a PA, which is a, physical, a, a physician's assistant. Now, ECT has been used since the 1940s, and many years of research have led to many improvements in the recognition of its effectiveness as a mainstream rather than a last resort treatment. Again, when it comes to depression, you can have all of the medications, the programs, but there's still going to be self-help and, of course, coping. So what can individuals do? Well, there are a number of of things people can do to reduce the symptoms of depression. For many people, regular exercise helps create positive feeling and improves mood. And again, I say that because earlier I mentioned depression can cause individuals to be lethargic, devoid of exercise. It can cause individuals to overeat or undereat. It also causes people to get sleep apnea. So getting enough quality sleep on a regular basis, eating a healthy diet, and of course, avoiding alcohol. And alcohol is a depressant. It can also reduce symptoms of depression. Or I'm going to say when you have quality sleep, exercise, and you avoid a depressant known as alcohol, it can be a help to reduce symptoms of depression. Now, I just want you to understand this. Depression is a real illness and help is available. So with proper diagnosis and treatment, the vast majority of people with depression can overcome it. So if you are one who is experiencing symptoms of depression, the first step is to see your family, physician, or psychiatrist. Now, what you're going to do with those mental health professionals, you're going to talk to them about your concerns, and you're going to have to request a thorough evaluation. And the reason why you want to do this, because this is all a start to addressing your mental health needs. Now, again, there are related conditions. Well, you have what I call para partum depression. Now, if you don't know what peripartum depression is, it used to be known as postpartum depression. Then you have seasonal depression, also called seasonal affective disorder. One of my favorites, and I did a video on this a long time ago, bipolar disorders. Then you have a persistent depressive disorder, previously known as this dysthemia. And you're going to have premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Then you're going to have disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. Now, I am going to 
describe all those disorders. Now, when we deal with the, I'm, I'm going to call it PMED, which is a premenstrual dysphoric disorder. That was added to the Diagnostic and Statistical Manual, the SM5, back in 2013. Now, a woman who has PMDD has severe symptoms of depression, irritability, and tension about a week before menstrual cycles begin. Now, common symptoms include mood swings, irritability, anger, depressed mood, and marked anxiety or, of course, tension. Now, other symptoms may include decreased interest in usual activities, difficulty concentrating, lack of energy or easy fatigue, changes in appetite with specific food cravings, trouble sleeping or sleeping too much, or even a sense of being overwhelmed or out of control. Now, physical symptoms may include breast tenderness or swelling, joint or muscle pain, sense of bloating, or even weight gain. Now, of course, these symptoms begin a week to 10 days before a start of menstruation and improve or stop around the onset of menses. Now, the symptoms basically lead to significant distress and problems with regular functioning or social interactions. So, for a diagnosis of PMDD, now PMDD is premenstrual dysphoric disorder. Symptoms must have occurred in most of the menstrual cycles during the past year and must have an adverse effect on work or social functioning. Now, premenstrual dysphoric disorder is estimated to affect between 1.8 to 5.8% of menstruating women every year. Now, of course, PMDD can be treated with antidepressants, birth control pills, or nutritional supplements. Of course, if you want to wing yourself off of this PMDD, well, guess what you're going to have to do? You're going to have to have diet and lifestyle changes, such as reducing caffeine and alcohol, getting enough sleep and exercise, and practicing relaxation techniques can help, like yoga, okay? Now, PMS, premenstrual syndrome, is similar to PMDD in that symptoms occur seven to 10 days before a woman's period begins. However, PMS involves fewer and less severe symptoms than PMDD. Now, there's also a disruptive mood dysregulation disorder. And that is a condition that occurs in children and youth ages 6 to 18. It involves chronic and severe irritability resulting in severe and frequent temperature outbursts. Now, a, a correction, temper outbursts. Again, when we deal with DMDD, which is disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, it is a disruptive mood, dis, it's a disruptive mood condition that occurs in children from the ages of 6 to 18 and involves a chronic and severe irritability resulting in severe and frequent temper outbursts. Now, the temper outbursts can be verbal or can involve behaviors such as physical aggression toward people or property. Now, these outbursts are significantly out of proportion of the situation and are not consistent with the child's development age. However, they must occur frequently, and I'm going to say three or more times per week on average, and typically in response to frustration. In between the outbursts, the child's mood is persistently irritable or angry most of the day or nearly every day because the mood is noticeable by others, such as parents, teachers, and peers. Very important that you understand that because this is why you have behaviors. Now, these behaviors can go right into adulthood and it may affect people like this brother that was involved in that triple murder suicide. Now, in order for a diagnosis of a disruptive mood dysregulation disorder to be made, symptoms must be present for at least a year in at least two settings, such as home and school with peers. And a condition must begin before the age of 10. Now, 
Disruptive mood dysregulation disorder is much more common in males than females. Why is this? Because it may occur along with other disorders, including major depressive attention deficit, hyperactivity, anxiety, and conduct disorders. So now you're getting into ADHD. Also, disruptive mood dysregulation disorder can have a significant impact on a child's ability to function and a significant impact on family because chronic severe irritability and temper outbursts can disrupt family life, can make it difficult for the child or youth to make or keep friendships, and it will also cause difficulties at school. Again, when you look at all these disorders like depression, if you don't catch it when a child is young, it is going to affect them in life. And this is why you have psycho killers out here. This is why you have individuals who have schizophrenia. Now, we might think it's funny, but when these behaviors start to build, they will cause a downfall in society. So we can't take them lightly. Now, with all that's being said, DMDD, which is disruptive mood dysregulation disorder, you need treatment. So what's going to occur with the treatment? Well, you need psychotherapy or, again, CBT, cognitive behavior therapy and or medicines. Now, also, you're going to have PDD. PDD is a persistent depressive disorder. Now, a person who has this order, disorder is basically referred to as diphemic disorder. Again, a person with persistent depressive disorder, it used to be known as dysthemic disorder. That's how you pronounce it. I apologize if I didn't pronounce it right when I viewed the word a while back in this presentation. It's diasthemic disorder. And that disorder basically has a depressed mood for most of the day, for more days than not, and for at least two years. Now, when children and adolescents, the mood can be irritable or depressed and must continue for at least a year. Now, in addition to depressed mood, symptoms include See how I'm going to tie all this together with depression? Because it is depression. These are sub disorders of depression, poor appetite or overeating, insomnia or hypersomnia. What is hypersomnia? Hypersomnia is when you get too much sleep, whereas insomnia, insomnia, or we call it insomnia, you get little sleep. Remember those two. Hyper, you oversleep. Insomnia, you get less sleep. Low energy or fatigue, low self-esteem, poor concentration or difficulty making decisions, feelings of hopelessness ties right back into depression because this is depression. Because persistent, Depressive disorder often begins in childhood, adolescence, or even early childhood, and it affects an estimated 0.5% of adults in the United States every year. So individuals with persistent depressive disorder often describe their mood as sad or down in the dumps because these symptoms have become a part of the individual's day-to-day -day experience, and they may not seek help. Why? Because they're just assuming that they've always been this way. What if this brother had that? You see, a lot of us are talking about what happened. I'm not going to, I already know what happened. But it's getting into the behavior. What triggered him? And this must have gone on for a prolonged period of time. 
because they're people who have had depression and they hold their feelings in until they snap. This brother snapped. Now, the symptoms cause significant distress or difficulty in work, social activities, or other important areas of functioning, while the impact of persistent depressive disorder on work relationships and daily life can vary widely. It, its effects can be as great or greater than those of major depressive disorder. Now, a major depressive episode may precede the onset of persistent depressive disorder, but may also arise or be superimposed on a previous diagnosis of persistent depressive disorder. So, Going over everything that I have mentioned here, we talked about depression, basically being a common and serious medical illness that negatively affects how you feel, the way you think, and how you act. Talked about the symptoms of being sad, appetite changes, trouble sleeping, loss of energy, being lethargic, you feel worthless, there's difficulty thinking, symptoms can last for at least two weeks. There's a difference between depression and, of course, grieving, talked about that. But overall, when we, when we look at depression, it's a disorder. And disorders, you should get help. Now, looking at what happened with this, with this brother, he didn't seek help. He didn't seek help because he believed he didn't need it. But I know when it comes to children, Women can make up any lie. They can tell the court, especially if the court can swing toward the guy's side. They'll find a way to manipulate the court. And the court will believe them, too, that the guy was abusive. The guy molested the children. See, a number of these women out there, they don't want the children either. They want the money for the children. And the court allows the mothers of children to be in control. Now, I don't know all of the behavior issues, but I believe this brother fell into some depression. Now, for me, going back, I was in this position. I just, okay, you want to do this? I'm not going to, I'm not going to do anything. I'll pay the child support. And the kids want to come back to me when they're older and hear my side, that's fine. If they don't, fuck them. That's it. It, it. It's unpopular with most people, but I would do, I would do that. Even if I'm paying child support, I'm already being labeled as a deadbeat. See, men are going to have to understand that we live in a society that is always going to degrade men anyway because we allow it to happen. Now, this murder-suicide that had taken place, do I understand it? I don't agree with it, but I understand it. The brother snapped. And I know with some of these women out here, they may have been talking some off the wall smack. They may have been threatening them. Some of these women will threaten to go get their family members. They will threaten to call the cops. You name it, they'll do it because that is a way they can control 
the man. They want his money. They don't want him around the children. This is why they even have an argument when a man wins custody because the children are a number of women's meal tickets. And for the most part, these children are gonna grow up being dysfunctional anyway. Why? Because their mother is going to tell them everything bad about their father anyway. And their daughters, which I don't know if this brother had daughters or not. But the daughters are going to have the same feeling about men that these mothers have. But in the long run, while everybody is looking at the act that has occurred, I'm looking at the psychology, the behavior. And I believe this has happened for a long period of time. He didn't reach out for help because he didn't believe that there is help for him. Men, let me come closer to the camera. There is help available. You have to reach out. And if you are having problems with the mother of your children, start documenting everything. Start recording everything. You might not get the courts on your side, but as long as you have enough documentation on your side, eventually somebody is going to take your case. Certainly it takes work. A lot of us men don't want to do the work. But if you really want the system to work in your favor, then we have to get more individuals who see our plight. Now, unfortunately, there are a lot of women's groups out there and they are, they are powerful. They donate money to a lot of politicians. If, if you want to turn an honest man or woman into a criminal, you give them money. And I say that because money will turn integrity and the criminality, it will. It'll have you doing all types of crazy things. But in the long run, did this brother have depression issues? Did he have the Jekyll and Hyde personality? Which equals bipolarism. Did he just snap because he may have lost his job? The mothers may have taken him to court on a monthly or weekly basis. They were calling him names. They were making it hard on him. Meanwhile, they could do whatever they want to do. Those are the questions that people need to ask when you are basically trying to get information. See, again, a lot of us are looking at the act, but we're not digging deep enough. I'm digging deep. I believe there were some behavioral issues. What about his family? He said he didn't have any family, it's the holidays. So when well, you don't even have your own family in your corner, that can cause depression. And you have this me against the world situation. And you feel like you're in a position that you can't win. So the only way you can achieve a victory is by taking out the mothers of your children and then to keep yourself from going to prison for the rest of your life, you take yourself out. But there needs to be more information about the behavior of this brother and the mothers. Who is influencing the mothers? Who is keeping the kids 
for these mothers were they working? Were these kids abused by someone else? Because lots of times when children are abused, it's not by the father, it's by the boyfriend or the stepfather, someone not even related to the child. We don't know those issues, but I'm asking those questions. Because the situation is very, very murky right now. But one thing that I do, I say it's murky because we don't know the background. We only know what happened at the surface. But one thing that is true, the system is against men. And here's what I'm gonna tell you men out here. Don't have children with the wrong person. And if you do have children, get a DNA test. But I will also say this brothers, if you don't want children, protect yourself. Utilize abstinence, put on a condom or two or three. Better yet, I choose the first option, abstinence. Why? Because you're guaranteed to save yourself between two to $300,000 of your money for the next, teen, next 18 years. But most of all, you will keep yourself from being in depression. You will keep yourself from thinking about suicide and other mental issues like stress that come along with mothers not allowing fathers to see their children, especially around the holidays. Because at the end of the day, men, the system is not on your side. So, what I'm going to say to you men is this. Use proper judgment when you are sexually active with women. Be careful with whom you marry or whom you date. Check out the package before you go further especially you black men, because sometimes brothers don't want to turn it down. When it comes down to my wallet and my lifestyle, I'll turn it down any day. Why? Because I don't want to end up like this brother. He's no longer living. And he took the lives of two other people because they wanted to control his life by keeping his children away from him and they were influenced by, I know they were influenced by other women, their family members, and of course they have the court system on their side. So men, practice abstinence or penis discipline because in the long run, it's time for men to think about their own lives. Society looks at us for what we can do for other people. Well, we need to erase that and do for us. And I say that because if we don't do for us and we continue to do for others, you're gonna get individuals who aren't gonna appreciate anything, they, anything you do for them anyway because they're gonna want more because they're selfish. You only live one life. So preserve your life by making proper decisions with who you interact with. And that's my combination. And that's, and that concludes this edition of the 401 Talk Zone 
radio show or I'm going to say this. That's my commentary for this edition of the Formula One Talk Zone radio show. If you like what I just presented, please comment, share, and of course, subscribe. Now, if you are looking for some more educational content, check out my Mind Up STEM channel. On that channel, I give you a daily dose of science, technology, engineering, and math. I'll be bringing the Blog Talk radio show back in 2022. Uh, but for now, if you cannot find me on YouTube or Blog Talk radio, you can find a 401 Talk Zone radio show on Twitter, MeWe, and Parler, because that's where all the political and social content goes. And for my STEM channel, you can find me on Twitter and, of course, LinkedIn. Because at the end of the day, I'm going to leave you with this. Be blessed for what you have. Don't worry about what you don't have. Always know that the sun rises in the east and sets in the west. And if I'm not talking about you, or if I am talking about you, here's what I'm going to tell you. If it doesn't apply, let it fly. But if the shoe fits, wear it. If you don't like the shoe, change it. Once again, thank you for listening to this edition of the 401 Talk Zone radio show right here on YouTube. Till next time, my name is Leon Jones. I want you all to have a wonderful and gracious night. God bless you. I'm out.